This episode is sponsored by Zenro Clothing Co. Pick up your tees and our accessories at zenroclothingco.com and be sure to use offer code SOCRATES at checkout for 20% off select items. Also, if you're not into uh, spending the money, just check out the Zenro Radio playlist. ZenRailClothingCo.com, music for your everyday. This episode also is sponsored by The Pornian Bakery. If you're located in the Pornian area of Scarborough, Toronto, be sure to check out The Pornian Bakery, say what's up to Arvel, and uh, pick up a donut or two. Bake daily, crafted with love. This episode also is sponsored by Podbean. Podbean is the podcasting platform of choice. It's the one that me and Vish use, and um, is great, you know, if you're uh, looking to start that DIY podcast yourself definitely check out podbean use uh the link podbean.com slash socratic gamers and gain one month of unlimited podcasting for free test it out build that content uh anyone could podcast right vish yep start a start a podcast and uh get your ideas out there all right enjoy the episode all right i am i'm going to say that it's just bad luck to have fans in uh, in the UFC again. So, like every single, I'm pretty sure that every single UFC fight that the that has been in pay per view so far, there's always been a break because okay. we, we've been watching all the paper. I'm pretty sure we've been watching all the pay per views, and because I can't think of one where I didn't. Maybe there was, but we didn't more. watch all. Like we didn't watch last week. Was there a fight last no, week? No, 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 no. There's a difference between um, pay-per-views and, like, fight nights. So, like, fight nights are kind of like uh, their cable. Oh. So, like, um, they, they don't even count. They don't even call them UFCs. They call them, like, UFC fight nights. So, okay. Like, like so, you, pay-per-view doesn't happen every week? No, no, no. It doesn't. Oh. No, no, no. It doesn't. Um, oh. The pay-per-views are all, like, the UFC 247 or, like, whatever, whatever. Like, mm-hmm. if there's a number after the UFC, that's the pay-per-view. Right. So, they've had, like... 247 pay-per-views or, or whatever i i don't know what the uh i don't know what the actual number was of yesterday's ufc mm-hmm. but yeah all that being said that was some craziness i'm pretty sure the fans are influencing this somehow or they're just making it like i you know what i mean it's, it's weird because we <laughs> we've been watching ufc for so long and you don't usually you don't usually see breaks right you know that always happened like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it's, it was, I don't know, it, would you even call that like a freak accident? Like, okay, okay, so so basically what happened, if you watched the UFC yesterday, Conor McGregor, he was like, he was talking about how he's going to be using a lot of like leg kicks in this fight. Oh, he right? did say that? Yeah, he, yeah <laughs> but, well, um, because that's how he got destroyed last time. So okay. Dustin was like, okay, I know he's going to come at me with a bunch of kicks. And I think, I think Connor was alluding to that too. Mm-hmm. So he was throwing some like heavy, heavy kicks, right? And then uh, Dustin said that he checked one of them, aka he blocked one of them. And in the block, he felt something go, and he's like, "I think I, I think that's when it broke." And then it just completed the break when he twisted on the ankle. So it was already breaking throughout the whole fight. Like there must have been like some minor fracture. But like putting excessive weight on it just made it snap, right? Yeah, it was uh, a yeah. Was a yeah crazy just moment. thinking about it again. Just uh, but remember, like um, Chris Weidman's one where he did the the roundhouse kick yeah, to the yeah, leg yeah. as well, and then and he's then landing on it. Ur- Uriah Hall, he he landed on it as well. Uriah Hall just checked that one. You know, it's crazy because like like when when I was doing more of like the striking based martial arts, um, I clipped an elbow. Mm-hmm. Right, and after that, I was like, I'm never throwing a roundhouse kick ever again. Obviously, I did it in sparring because we were all padded up, but in like when you're not padded, I was like, I would never use this technique mm-hmm. because like the shin is weak, and like uh, you you know like Muay Thai fighters who use a lot of those those roundhouse kicks, yeah, uh, they they like condition their legs by micro fracturing it, mm-hmm. so they'll kick something really heavy or they'll like run a right. really hard thing and like what it does is it like creates these minor fractures in the shin and then those heal up and they become stronger mm-hmm. so it was like in fight science the 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 science show about fighting uh it, it like calcifies and then it can become stronger than a baseball bat right yeah but i guess you know if you're not doing that on a regular basis no yeah if you're just doing it for like I mean, that, that you got to be doing it for like years. Years, right? So, like, yeah. 
how long has caught like if you look at his leg it's also kind of thin mm-hmm. you know yeah. he's more of like a like his his style of fighting seems more karate based to me like very like in and out you know kind of kind of like uh jabs but he was like using yeah. all of his weight on it right you know actually this reminds me of when i was training with carlos and i we were like doing roundhouse kicks and then carlos is like okay throw a roundhouse kick so i threw one and he's like that there's no weight in that so basically i was throwing it like a taekwondo because that's how i was trained a taekwondo style roundhouse kick which is more like a it's like a jab right okay. but then the way carlos wanted us to do it was like you step into it and you lay all of your weight into it but i was like dude i'm not gonna like, I'm, I'm not gonna throw it like this ever. You know, I did it for the drill because there's a pad there. But like, I knew in my head, like if I if I threw with all my weight, what if my shin just snaps right in half? <laughs> mm-hmm. And you always think about it, but you never see it happening. But yeah. then we're watching this like all happen time now. twice now, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh my, or three times with Anderson Silva. Right. It's crazy. Don't throw leg kicks, people. That's just so bad. <laughs> I mean, stomps are totally fine. Like if you if you like stomp downwards. Right. But if you use like your shin to kick somebody, oh God, it's like, yeah. Like e- even using physics, right? Just thinking about like how physics, like if, if you, um, you know, we used to break wood, mm-hmm. right? In martial arts. So like, it's a bit of a trick. It's, it's like part trick, part force. You have to know where to hit the wood. So if you hit it right in the center, there's like a weak point. You know, there's an inflection, there. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. something like that. Like I don't know the physics behind it, but mm. but if you're throwing a roundhouse kick, it's the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. You're hitting like right in the center of your shin, right? You're that's probably gonna, gonna snap uh, it right in half, <laughs> you know. And we've seen that three times now, right? Crazy. Mm. Is you didn't hear the the interview uh, when Joe? Because I had the headphones in, but Joe's like. Uh, what were you thinking? And he's like, as soon as my foot landed, he's like, oh my god, I'm another Anderson Silva, because <laughs> Anderson Silva did it that way, right? Like, <laughs> that's. I feel. What do you think about the interview process at the end? I thought that was a bit too much. I was like, you should just let him leave. Like he was, he was <laughs> screaming in pain. You well, know? everybody kind of wants. Used to, people are used to that, like, uh, <laughs> like a post just, fight, but yeah. like his an- his ankle was broken. Like, like get, you're in shock. Like, yeah. what if he threw up? Like, what, you know, like, what if something crazy, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, how are you just going to sit there and interview next to him? <laughs> I mean, I get it's a show, I guess, right? And that's yeah, part of your obligation. Uh, yeah. K- kudos to Connor, though, because, like, either he really believes his own act or he's holding on to the act. Because, like, even at the end, he's like, this isn't over. Mm-hmm. Like, we're going to fight again. You didn't really win this one, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, do you know you're acting or you know there's, a, there's a little a level to yeah, I'm sure there's he knows this there's he still has to, you to bring like the, the performance and, yeah right into this fight yeah it's and it does feel like oh uh, this is not I mean nobody wants to see this as the ending right because it's not I guess but like I feel a bit of pro wrestling from Connor right now sure but he's always been doing that though. I know I know always been doing that. and it's it works like um floyd mayweather used it so like he was talking about you know after the jake paul fight yeah uh so he was saying how he in the beginning he was just a really good boxer and nobody cared because Mm -hmm. they're like oh he's undefeated he's phenomenal it wasn't until he became the bad guy that everyone started focusing on him yeah yeah, yeah. so he like he put on this character as like money mayweather Mm -hmm. It, it was originally pretty boy floyd and he was just really good at boxing. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, nobody cared. And then it became uh, Money Mayweather, all about the millions, all about like getting yep. the check. And then people would pay to see him lose, mm-hmm. right? But he was such a good boxer, right? Right. So it's almost like, it's almost like that's what Connor did too. I think know? so, yeah. There must be some, you know, understanding of PR there where when you're viewed as the bad guy, everybody wants to see you lose. They're yeah, going to pay totally. to see you lose. And then the other people who pay to see you win as well. So like you're still getting both. Um, yeah yeah audiences yeah yeah that was that was weird i if if it had continued though i still think connor would have lost like he didn't he was it was good in the he was good in the beginning uh, which one uh connor connor he had a good start super aggressive right? yeah yeah, but he's always aggressive right but but the thing is like dustin's durable Mm -hmm. you know like he's he's not like i was telling you before uh the reason why connor had the death touch is he lost 
a ton of weight to go to the weight class and then he'd balloon back up Mm -hmm. before the fight and then in ballooning back up he'd have more weight and more power against his opponents Mm -hmm. but now that he's at more of like a equal level like his punches and his strikes aren't really sitting as heavy as they used to you know you saw it in the first fight like um, everyone's like oh Connor's left hand the Mm -hmm. death touch the one that he knocks everyone out with he hit Dustin with that a few times and Dustin was like oh yeah it hurt but it's Mm -hmm. like but he didn't get KO'd yeah 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 you know so yeah do you think he's gonna fight again Connor yeah that's that's all going around Uh, I think he will yeah but how long is that recovery process you know one year probably I don't know yeah, How long was, was it? Because Silva came back too, right? Anderson. Silva. Yeah, but when Silva came back, he was not the same person. He was like yeah. tentative. Right. He wasn't throwing as hard as before. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. At that sort. Because now you're like you're sort of like let's go break again <laughs> in front of the world, and that'd be crazy. To have two breaks, that'd be bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. Hey, eh? could you imagine that? Ooh. But what they're saying with the Silva one, which is good with technology, is uh, when Silva first broke his shin mm-hmm. they would have had to amputate it because they didn't know how to oh wow put it back to yeah so that was like one of the fears but now i guess modern medicine mm-hmm. you just like put it back together but but that's crazy like you one thing khabib said and i was like and i've been seeing a lot of these memes and i'm like this is so true khabib was like good will always defeat evil um yeah and, yeah, then, yeah. and then this other guy wrote like we just saw connor become the evil villain in a movie who lost mm-hmm. cause like you know like at the end of like an like like villains like any yeah, 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 movie, yeah, yeah. right because right. Dustin was playing the good guy the whole time and then Connor was like always evil always evil always evil and then mm-hmm. he lost like mm-hmm. badly right. not even just like a not even like a like the last one's KO okay yeah you um you, you're just not the better man this mm-hmm. night but mm-hmm. this one was more like karma got caught up to you <laughs> you know what I mean like with yeah. all the stuff he was saying yeah and dustin was cheesed too because he was saying how um connor was saying how he's gonna kill him like actually kill him you know and <laughs> hey, 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 but like but dustin's like yeah you can trash talk but like when you start talking about death like people really do die so it's like are are we really gonna venture into that zone where i'm gonna like well i think there's no you? level to trash talk it's that's just no, yeah, that, that's right. what Dustin was saying. He's like, there's yeah. no level to it, but like, there's some things you just don't say, you know. Like, I'm gonna murder you. Like, whoa. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, if he did end up doing that, it's just like, you just, um, just said it to the world that he was doing it. So we know yeah, that's it. true. Yeah, that's true. It's yeah, like, you're gonna be convicted. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah, yeah that's right, what right. I mean. Like, it's yeah, all I just talking. don't. Yeah. But remember when Connor got on the bus and he threw the chair at mm-hmm, the. Mm-hmm. Um, that's because crazy it's all too. like W. That all does look like WWE stuff. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's, it feels like it's kind of just making a mockery of the sport. Like you guys are doing an extremely brutal sport. So yeah, I don't know why. Why is does but, that? But maybe percent. maybe it's because like it catches the layman, right? Like I've mm-hmm. seen all these memes. Like when Connor was fighting, everyone's like, like these meme channels. These like fighting meme channels are like, oh yeah, I'm really into. Uh, UFC and they're like oh name one fighter and they're like Conor McGregor <laughs> yeah he's like okay yeah well that's the mainstream guy but like you're you're not really into it into it you're more like I just want to see blood yeah, yeah, yeah you know and people got what mm-hmm. they what they wanted <laughs> yeah. but can you believe that that's how it ended like from the last one he got a straight KO and he's like I'm gonna rebound I'm gonna destroy this guy at the way, and he was saying, right. "This guy's gonna leave in a stretcher," and then it, <laughs> he left. He, he left in a stretcher. Oh <laughs> my god! <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, that's crazy. And oh, uh, one of the earlier fights, the Ryan Hall guy, I was saying, um, the leg locker, and he kept going oh, yeah. into it. <laughs> like, dude, that's it was it was really innovative. Yeah, it was funny. Yeah. I mean, it looked funny. But. It, it looked funny, but he caught, like, in his career, he caught so many people with that right, technique. Right, right, right. So he was, like, banking on it. But the other guy who's fighting, I think he's also a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, so mm-hmm. he's like, okay, I'm just going to counter it. Like, I really do feel there's a difference between, like, like sport fighting. Well, I mean, this is sport fighting, but, like, there's levels to realism. Mm-hmm. So, like, the guy that was doing all the dives, yeah, you can do that in, like, jiu-jitsu competitions. But, like, when punches are involved, there's a very limited amount of 
strikes you can actually use, you know? Yeah. And I think the more and more closer you get towards deadly styles of fighting, like de- deadly scenarios, there's very few techniques you can use. <laughs> this is how I actually personally feel. Like Miyamoto Musashi, this like samurai dude, he was saying that um, that there's only so many ways to kill a man, like to cut a man down. Okay. So like if you if you go from like sport grappling, okay, you have an infinite because mm-hmm. there's no there's no punches and then you go into like introducing slaps and then like okay you got to cut out a bunch of techniques because like right those won't work, won't work. Yeah. and then now it's like okay now we're introducing kicks and strikes mma style now you got to cut out more techniques and then if you add like okay now we're we're doing with our knee sticks you got to take mm-hmm. out more time te- like what grappling you how are you gonna get close to them you know what i mean yeah and i think like the closer you get to realism like you don't really have that many options. Like with this guy, like why are you doing so many crazy <laughs> techniques and then they're just not working? Because it's not fitting for that scenario. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He yeah. didn't do it before. And in- he did. No, no, he did. Right. And he caught everyone with it. Like I, I should show you this video where um he's fighting <laughs> this amazing grappler because nobody's seen it before. And right. like when you don't see it, it's like okay, I don't know how to defend this. Yeah. But we've all seen like crazy leg lock divers now, so it's like, mm. yeah, it's yeah, it's it's like you figure out the counter to it, right? Yeah, actually, it, this is interesting because like a lot of when karate people got into the UFC, people didn't know how to fight fight that style mm-hmm. because they're so odd. Like, uh, did you see the one? No, I don't think you're watching the movie. Um, but there's like a weird karate stance where your arms are low and you're bouncing back and forth the whole time. Okay. I don't, uh, I don't. All right. So like, um, so basically it's a, a weird looking style okay. and the rhythm is so not what people are used <laughs> mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. in the beginning. Like these karate people like Leo, Leo, Leo to Machida and, um, uh, wonder boy who fought yesterday. They were doing some, like they were having amazing success because people didn't know how to time right. the, the thing, but then right. now they're all getting like out wrestled. It's like, okay, now I just need to, run in grab you and then you can't do that anymore. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. people like figure out yeah, the yeah. thing over time right. it's constantly right. evolving yeah yeah anyways it's crazy oh uh, actually one last one last thing about uh connor i thought this is interesting uh you know how he's always talking about proper 12 his whiskey okay so he, he always promotes his like whiskey and, and stuff mm. um he sold it for 180 million dollars <laughs> so i was thinking was this your plan the whole time you're gonna prop it up because people like who bought it they're like yeah, oh, it yeah, tastes yeah. terrible they don't like the whiskey but he's like promote it promote it promote it promote it sell it off to someone and now i have all the profit yeah yeah, yeah. that's probably yeah, pro- probably just like why why are you fighting again you have 180 million dollars why are you fighting <laughs> yeah. it's promotion you know yeah. why did you break your shin and you still held the character mm-hmm. it's promotion mm-hmm. you know but we were saying that he did seem scared or like it, it's like those bullies who like they they act extra tough. Yeah, yeah. He probably was actually nervous for the fight. Yeah, like, you can kind of sense it. It was. I like, mean, oh, he lost the first badly. Like yeah, so it's KO. like So that that that's probably still running in his head, right? Yeah, he's like, I can't get KO'd. I can't get KO'd. <laughs> he didn't get KO'd, but he got. To... Oh, and and also like um, so you also didn't hear this part. So when he his leg was broken, um, they were gonna call it like a defeat. And he's screaming like, I know, I def- heard that. Oh, he's, he's yeah, like, it's saying. a doctor stoppage, doctor stoppage. Cause that's a different, you know, he didn't get defeated. He got doctor stopped. Right. So that it's sort of like, he didn't give up. The doctor's forcing you to stop, mm-hmm. but it's like, come on, bro. Are you really going to stand back up? No. Like he just didn't want that tarnished record, you know? Yeah. But technically it is doctor stoppage, right? No. Yeah. That's why he was, he was making sure that. It was, but then I love like a, a scrolling because a defeat would be if he was knocked out. Yeah, t- totally. But I love I love how um, I was scrolling because he didn't want TKO, right? He wanted doctor stoppage. But all of the all the news reports were like Connor gets TKO'd, and then in small print by doctor stoppage. So it's like, <laughs> okay, you still we're all still gonna think like you got TKO. You know, like he was trying to avoid that Connor gets TKO'd yeah. headline, right? But it didn't work. Because they, they just, like, they gave him the doctor stoppage, but they put it in small print. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. It's all about his, like, image. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably, like, the record and I don't know. Cause he Whatever just, else. I don't know why he's still fighting. You, you yeah, got a lot of totally, I don't understand yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. It makes no sense. Like, you I mean, so you went and did money. it with um, 
Floyd, right? He yeah, fought Floyd. Fought Floyd so like, yeah. That was for the money. Of course. No, like, yeah, totally. like, why are we still here? Yeah, I, I don't know. A lot of people are saying that too. It's like you lose your hunger, you know. But I think maybe it's maybe it's his like. I bet you it's his insecurity. You know, we talk about core wounds. Mm. Like, I bet you because before he was like, um, he was on welfare. Like, I watched his documentary. He was like really poor. That's why he always buys those extravagant things because they make him feel like he's not nothing. But deep down, he feels like he's nothing. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe that's still running in the background of his like subconscious programming. Maybe. I think he wants to end as a good guy. But You think so? Yeah, maybe. But, he but he's gone too that. far. Yeah, he's gone too far. Well, in the last fight with Dustin, he was a really nice guy. He was like, we're doing this for charity, blah, blah, blah. And then mm -hmm. it only switched when he uh, Dustin was like, where's the money you promised me? Because like, he didn't give him the donation. Yeah, and then Connor's like, "Oh, we're doing tax checks on it because we're like, we we want to make sure that you're not just going to use the money for your own means." Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. And then in the end, Connor didn't end up donating to him. He donated to like a different charity, but in the same area, like Louisiana, where Dustin's charity is. So like that, that's where all the bad blood came from. Because Dustin's like, "Where's my money that you promised? You didn't give me the money." Yeah. Crazy. Crazy how it's like not even about fighting anymore. Yeah. With, with this guy, with this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. He really should just stop. Anyways. Yeah. Any other thoughts on Connor? No. That was just very interesting. Yeah. It was, <laughs> that, was, that was an odd one. I was, I, was I was looking at the countdown or the to the clock, sorry. As, as like... Because he was losing right at the end there. Yeah, no, no, yeah, totally, yeah. And, um... I thought yeah. he got KO'd, like, when he stepped in and when he did, stepped like, back, back and he punch, fell back. I was like, yeah. oh, he, oh, like, he just got knocked out. And then they It was only like, after Ooh. the actual time was called, or the round was done, and then, then he's like... saw, it's like, like um... Michael, Michael. I really thought he, like, he slept him. Yeah, like, yeah, When he yeah. hit, because it looked like, from our it angle... It looked like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It did, it did. Actually, somebody even commented on my Instagram was like, I thought he got KO'd. And I was like, yeah, me too, bro. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It did look like that. Yeah. That was, that was an odd one. That was... that was just... <laughs> What a way to end it. What a way to end your career if you end your career there. Yeah. I just don't think he's going to end it there. Really, eh? I couldn't see him coming back. Or I, he might come back, but it's over. It's like, yeah, 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 who yeah. are you going to... It's sort of like Anderson Silva. Yeah. Like, that guy just got just getting demolished now mm -hmm. it's like you're too old people know your tricks yeah yeah um all right so let's go to let's go to richard branson okay all right so he just he's the first person to go to space you were just watching it this morning uh of the billionaires right yeah, yeah, yeah. i just heard about it like the other day that they were doing um i i knew about his um like this uh virgin galactic company but um, for him as a billionaire going, because they've, they've done the tests and everything, right? So as the first, I guess, uh, a billionaire or in some sense, like he's not a person who's an astronaut, right? Like, right, right, right. So is he the first billionaire in space? Yeah, I think I would say that. Yeah, yeah he is, right? Like yeah. he's like the, the first civilian. Yeah, I'll like say. a civilian, yeah, that's the word, um, to go up there. It's like... Was, surface of this so he was like in space space they did like, have the the floating like they were floating for a bit oh, okay cool he was supposed to be um oh what's his name who's um jeff, jeff bezos. bezos was yeah that's so he did it early so i think jeff bezos is probably like pissed in the next few days oh okay so he did it on purpose <laughs> maybe yeah so he, he wanted to be the first one yeah because i saw like the t title of an article or something saying like here's like he's trying to beat yeah, Another billionaire yeah, yeah. to space. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to see Elon go up there anytime soon. Uh, I don't think so. I mean, they have SpaceX has a different um, plan already. Like they have. Um, it's funny. This is this one was just going to the surface of space. Right. And coming back. Yeah. yeah. In a plane kind of thing. Um, Jeff Bezos thing is just a rocket going up and then coming back down. Oh, OK. Right. All done in a few minutes. And then um, SpaceX mission later this year is. Uh, uh, they already picked out the crew 
uh, civilian crew. That, oh, uh, the Inspiration Four or whatever. Yeah, that will be orbiting Earth. Oh, cool. Oh, so, so that's like an, oh, that's interesting. A, that's so, even more. <laughs> wow, each one is like leveling up. The yeah, other leveling one, up. You know, it's like one is just <laughs> hitting the surface, one is going into it, and then one is orbiting it. Yeah. True, because imagine if, oh, maybe that's why he did it first, because he's like, okay, it's not going to be as stellar if I just... Yeah, I think so, probably, yeah. You know, but it seemed makes more sense to be this level versus, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah like, <laughs> it's like, oh, that's cool, you you broke the barrier, but we were actually in space. Mm-hmm. If, if you didn't if you didn't time it like this. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, I was, uh, before... But the thing is, it's, they're all um, uh, commercial companies. Oh, that's cool. Like, none of them are government-related, right? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, they're owned by those billionaires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's the difference here with the space age that we're going in right now. Right, right, right. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now commercial um, companies are entering into the space race. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was saying, um, as you were watching it, how crazy it would be if something happened to Richard Branson. Just like, because, <laughs> you know, like, we just saw Conor McGregor's thing. It's like, yeah, what yeah, if yeah. he had two days of bad luck? <laughs> But these things are all like super planned and stuff, planned and tested, and yeah, yeah, true, like true. multiple. Like it's not their first flight, right? Totally, yeah, yeah it's sure. his first flight, but it's not the their first flight. But he's like seventy years old. Damn, it's, it's so old. he got into this. yeah, but seventy is like the new fifty, bro. Like everyone, well, just as a billionaire's a, age, sure. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I guess, but like, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of old actors that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, 70 doesn't sound so I, I think so when bad. you have money, you can... You, you, you have better health care. Yeah, 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 and, like, yeah, yeah, stem yeah, cells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Joe Rogan is, like, 51, but he looks so jacked and, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I was watching uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and one of the things they were saying... I heard Joe Rogan talk about this before, and watching that movie, because it took clips from, like, the past and, like, mm-hmm. put them in there. And um, the actors of today, at the same age don't look at all like the actors of before like remember in 30 was like you were you basically look like you were 60 mm-hmm. but i think that was all the cigarette smoke and the alcohol yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You know, i think looks so unhealthy yeah, like, yeah, yeah but now you look like Chris chris hemsworth right <laughs> he's like 30 whatever 36 or something and he looks so like yeah, he looks like a specimen, you know, but if you take a 36 year old from like <laughs> 1920, you're like, oh, you look really right. unhealthy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Probably the, yeah, all that smoking. <laughs> yeah, right? It's weird. Because they were doing it all the time. It's, it's weird how that wasn't such a normal thing. And it was like, it wasn't just smoking, it was like chain smoking. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. know, so it was like, you're yeah. really. And it was not like, uh, yeah, it was the whole world was like that. Like, yeah, 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 it's totally. crazy. Yeah, smoking was uh, super, super normal. Remember we were talking about the, the um, lighter in the car? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. They yeah. don't even do that anymore. It's yeah. just like a plug. So mm-hmm. for those of you who don't know, all the cars before used to have a cigarette lighter, and then that cigarette lighter could become a uh, car battery thing, like an adapter. It's a 12 volt connector. Yeah. Yeah. But, but now they just have the 12 volt connector and nobody gives out the cigarette lighter anymore. But I remember that you'd push it and Mm -hmm. then it'd become hot and then Mm -hmm. you can use it. Yeah. It's weird. I wonder if that'll come back. Like given that weed's now legal. Oh, well, you're not supposed to be driving and smoking. That's true too. You can't (laughs) even hot box and smoke because like people in the car would get high. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You're not supposed to do that. <laughs> and also that like that smell will linger but it's weird you know it's weird it's like we still have a um we still have a stigma towards weed because like we were in the park and this dude was smoking and we were like i was like whatever but you could see that it's like people are looking like oh this guy smoked weed right yeah, yeah. but it's like yeah but it's legal though yeah no it's gonna take time for because it wasn't legal for us so long. Right? I know, right? Like, so it's going to take time for people to get used, used to, to that. It. Yeah. it made me think of like, oh, we're like in Amsterdam or something now. Mm-hmm. you Because know? like before it was like super legal there. So I wonder if like people who come from different countries are like amazed at can Like so let's say, because one of my cousins is supposed to come here. I think when he comes, he'll be like, whoa, people are smoking weed everywhere. Like this is so illegal in my country, you know? Because it's like death penalty yeah, 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 there, yeah. you know? Like, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. right? Like, it must be so trippy. For of course. Other yeah. I mean, in a lot of those areas, it's just like 
drugs in general are bad, right? So yeah. it's like, yeah, to but, see a modern nation that has a yeah. weed is legal. <laughs> right? Totally. Across the country. But, yeah. but it's weird because, like, they don't consider, like, alcohol and cigarettes nope. drugs. <laughs> yeah. It's like... Everyone, that's normal. <laughs> yeah, it's normal, right? And they have them all over um, the Philippines, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. I wonder what drugs are still there. being done. It's just not... I guess not as predominant, right? There, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. But you can, like get killed for that like yeah. it's not it's not like here you're going to jail it's like there they'll probably right, slaughter right, you. right 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 yeah is it is it like that in india too like um like weed super illegal or like other? Well, yeah i mean it's all it's still illegal but a lot of people do it there yeah it's just, totally yeah. yeah there's gonna be an underground scene mm-hmm. it's funny you think about um if you watch those like mexican cartel movies uh wait do you have anything else about richard branson because i feel like we're veering away from no, I mean, uh, they did their mission. Uh, they were supposed to announce something later. I don't know what that is. Okay. Whatever. Who, you have a Virgin mobile phone? No. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what they're announcing. Is it something about like how other people can do it now, too? Or like, are you, oh. are you like officially making this tickets available to buy these things? So, so what do you need? Buy these seats? Like, go up really, go yeah, up and check out space. And check out, yeah. They're trying to make it like super commercial. Like, Maybe. <laughs> that's kind of lame. I don't know. It's like a roller coaster ride, but on steroids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's I, how it starts, though. I feel like Virgin Mobile is like, or Virgin in general, it's like dying. I don't know anybody who, like, who has a Virgin phone. I don't even think they do it anymore. I don't think they make phones. Do they make phones? Yeah, I don't know yeah. what they... I, I always knew them as only as a plane company. What? Really? No, they were like a phone company or something. And they did like... Yeah, yeah I know, I know, I know. The radio. Virgin Mobile. I know that, I know that. Radio like That came too. later, though. Wasn't like the planes there before? Is it? I thought they were like a music company in the beginning. They did like radio or something. Oh, did they? Yeah, I think he might have ventured in different things, I guess. I just didn't pay attention to, to the name. <laughs> Yeah, true, yeah. Yeah, why are you paying attention to this guy? He's just like a <laughs> rock star billionaire type. Yeah. Anyways, um yeah, it's it's weird when to circle back now. Uh it's weird when you watch those like cartel movies and then you see all these people dying, you know. Mm-hmm. Like a Sicario, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff and it's all about like um trafficking cocaine, you know. Yeah. And then people in like banking institutions they do cocaine, but you never see where that cocaine came from. You know what I mean? Like we don't see the supply chain of it all. Mm-hmm. I guess that goes with everything. Like plastics. Sure. Yeah. Or like, um, you know, we, we take a lot for granted, you know, mm-hmm. even, even trucking companies. I was reading this book before, uh, Joey L, this photographer, he does like history channel photography. And there was this show about truck. Do you, do you have you heard of that? The show where it's like they follow truck drivers around the world, in like the most dangerous zones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So like, yeah. So their jobs are like the like, ice road truckers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. so their jobs are like so dangerous, but we just see like, oh, Coca Cola is on the shelf, <laughs> you know? But, yeah, exactly. Right, right. But I think like with COVID, remember when like there was no products, you know? Yeah. Because the supply chain was like slowing down, it, it made you think like. Why we really rely on these truckers that we don't even see. Mm-hmm. I think there was a show that I watched before where they were brought like truckers from here and they bring them into other parts of the world and how those truckers are like, there. it's not that like, oh, it's way you, different. You're, your stuff here is so much easier than it's like, really? Like yeah. you go to India and they're like in like, they go to these mountainous areas where like, the roads are so tiny. Yeah, totally. Like, how are you driving this yeah, truck yeah. through that? Like, where, what about the rules and regulations? That's like, none yeah, of yeah, yeah, <laughs> those totally things exist. That's so true. <laughs> Actually, um, we, we were in, when I was in Peru, we had this like cab driver that was driving us to a different part of Peru. Yeah. But there's so, it was also in Costa Rica, this also happened, but there was no guardrail. Mm-hmm. So basically, if I look to my right, it's just a drop. We're yeah. driving up a mountain. Right. And he was going fast. And I was like, we're going to die. <laughs> yeah. That's in my head. I was like, what's going on? Like, where's the guardrail? Like, if you took the corner to. Like, there's no, like, um, fear or they're just no fear, dude. Crazy. it's so weird <laughs> and and when we were like we were in costa rica and we we're trying to make our plane to our, the next country uh it was raining heavy but he was still going like full <laughs> blast speed God. and there was no guardrail i was like i'm prepared like mentally in those situations i have to like be like 
if I die, I die. <laughs> it is what it is. Right. You know what I mean? Because it's it's so freaky. Yeah. One wrong move, we're all gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but they do that daily. daily they do, you know? yeah, I know. So it's like to them, it's like nothing, you know? <laughs> they like laugh at us. They're like, why are you so afraid? Yeah, exactly. Actually, he was saying that, and he was like, why are you so afraid? Exactly, like, yeah, uh, of course. He's done it like a thousand times. So it's Yeah, like... <laughs> yeah, but I don't want this to be the one day you mess up, you know? <laughs> That's yeah, weird. We, that's also like uh, planes. Actually, this is a great segue into uh, Sully. Uh, it's like planes, mm-hmm. you know, because they do them every single day. When yeah. are the times you're going to actually have a um, an accident? Mm-hmm. So, so anyway, so we watched the movie Sully, and um, it was a bird strike that caused the plane. So I didn't even know. I heard it in a different movie, Friends with Benefits. They talked about Sully. And how okay. he landed the plane in the Hudson. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know that was like a really big thing uh, until we watched this movie. Right. You know, like I, I guess it was on the news, but I hadn't, I didn't pay attention to it. Mm-hmm. Did it even make world news? Yeah, I think it did. Oh, it did? Of course okay. it did. <laughs> okay, so maybe, yeah, I just wasn't paying attention at the everybody time. Just, everybody was alive, so of course it did. It was like I remember. I remember when it happened. Oh, really? Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. But I don't remember like where I was or anything. I was just like, I remember that story. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't, I had only heard the story in that other movie. Okay. So then, when you're like, we're going our Tom Hanks binge. Uh, currently, we're watching News of the World. We we put on Sully, and I I was like, wow, this like crazy event happened where, and they were taking off a bird. A flock of birds hit the engine. Mm-hmm. It shut off both engines, and instead of making it to different um, airports, he had to land on the Hudson River mm-hmm. in New York. Yeah, and the the big thing about this uh, this whole thing was that New York earlier, because this was two thousand nine when it happened, but in two thousand one they had like a bad plane, like nine eleven. Right? Well, yeah, nine eleven. Yeah. So like. Just oddly, like um, it's another plane poetic issue. kind of thing yeah, where it's yeah, like yeah. a plane situation, but everybody is alive. Yeah, totally. It, <laughs> yeah, and, and they're saying like that's the great thing about this because they haven't had good news about a plane, <laughs> you know. Yeah, in these parts, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's weird. So, so the reason why I thought this movie was interesting is how when when they were on the. Uh, the plane and he was like oh we're gonna land we landed in the hudson Mm -hmm. and then the news was like we crashed in the hudson Mm -hmm. you know it was like oh that's so weird how the well i mean we knew this but the news always spins everything and they were really making it a point in the movie Mm -hmm. you know about showing like the reality of the situation and then they would show all the news people being like Mm -hmm. blowing it out of proportion like they have two minutes to live it's negative whatever outside (laughs) yeah he does like he seems to be doing like a lot of like truth kind of uh, yeah it? his like the like, post yeah yeah you know, it's about like showing you the reality situation mm-hmm. um sully showing you the reality situation mm-hmm. yeah or maybe that's just like the ones we've watched so far because we haven't watched castaway or anything like that yeah i haven't it's been a long time and i don't think i even really watched that whole movie before so castaway yeah yeah, yeah castaway but I wonder if like he's picking. Sometimes I wonder if these actors know the truth about something and they choose to do these movies on purpose because they want to be a voice piece for. Yeah, you know they I mean? like, they they investigate the stories. Hotel Rwanda. Like, yeah, the, yeah. Like, why did you choose that movie? Yeah. You know, or like Blood. Oh, the, for per, perfect example, Leo. So um, he did Blood Diamond, mm-hmm. right? And then also Leo is a huge activist for climate change. Mm-hmm. So it's like I feel like. I feel like they pick movies according to like their belief yeah, systems. Yeah. And like, especially with the Tom Hanks ones, these are all like, he's been acting as, um, like great Americans, people who are like, Oh yeah, that's true too. Yeah. 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 I didn't yeah. think about that. Yeah. What was the other movie you watched? He's like in Berlin. He has to go to Berlin. Yeah. The bridge of spies. Bridge of spies. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He started with that. Then there's captain Phillips, other great American. Yeah. Another great American. Yeah. Right. So it's like, handling tough oh, situations sully he he plays he's like the icon of like the perfected american <laughs> true i didn't even think about that yeah and we're watching news of the world right now i mean that's not a perfected american but in it he's bringing this native like this little girl who right. was brought up by natives back to her home mm-hmm. yeah he is like the hero figure that's <laughs> so true he's like the archetype of who you should be who you should be looking up to. Yeah. 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 Well, that's trippy. 
Maybe that's why he's such a great actor. Maybe he's really not a great actor, but he just plays great parts. <laughs> okay. Remember, we were like, I swear he's the same guy in every movie. He's the same guy, but it's His like... His appearance it's, is pretty much the same. These are all great people that he's acting as, though, right? Yeah, so yeah like, and, and we attribute those characteristics to him so we're yeah. like oh he's an amazing actor but it's like his his voice doesn't change like slightly <laughs> but you can still tell it's tom hanks you know <laughs> it's, yeah. it's not like christian bale where you're like oh dude this guy's method you yeah know? and nobody really talks about christian bale nobody everybody does yeah, tom hanks stuff <laughs> dude we, we broke the code that's why everyone thinks tom hanks is such a great character like a uh, actor it's because he just plays like roles. great people yeah great the, people. great people yeah yeah true or like you know who's a really great actor too jared leto He's mm-hmm. like super method too. Like he'll lose like tons of weight. Remember, he was in that movie where he was like super big. Um, I have I have to I haven't really seen his movies. Like two, oh really? Yeah. Okay. I find anybody who does like the weight transformation thing like it's so fascinating to me because you no, devote yourself to a role, right? It, that is true, but it's like maybe it's because um, see, like Christian Bale, like he acted in Vice, he. Had, added all that weight yeah. but vice he's playing dick cheney but dick cheney isn't a loved character right. a person or a loved person right so we don't attribute so, yeah it's like as being a great yeah. character oh that's very true yeah so like every person that tom hanks plays he's not playing a bad guy he's playing only a good guy so you always you only him yeah. do marketing matters man <laughs> he picked his role so well <laughs> that's so true yeah, that's so true. Even uh, Da Vinci Code. We're me and Tara watching Da Vinci Code right now, one and two, mm-hmm. and like, yeah, he's another brilliant, amazing character mm-hmm. that he plays the hero. He plays the hero. Yeah, he's we'll always, always be, the hero. Yeah. <laughs> and Connor's playing the heel. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's so funny. I eh? like that's that's how we consume media. Yeah, it's like we either like good or evil, and then that's the simplest way of understanding the we're, world we're and so that's superficial yeah and that's that's what we as humans do all the time because this is easy to understand the world to, and in black and white that, that's when so, it's gray it's a bit difficult that's so interesting and then we're so shocked when they're like actually bad people like think about bill cosby mm-hmm. everyone's like oh my god he's like the american dad and then this like rape allegation mm-hmm. stuff mm-hmm. and we're like shocked but it's like you're well, he's out of prison now yeah true 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 <laughs> but but it's like who you play is not who you are right but we start to associate who you play as who you are. Mm-hmm. Weird. Weird how we do that. Yeah. Regardless, <laughs> Tom Hanks is amazing. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> His movies are really, really good. Um, yeah. Speaking of Leo, uh, I read the I read this book, uh, The Climate Cover-Up. Mm-hmm. And one of the... Like, so, you know, Leo is like a huge activist for climate change. Yeah. Uh, the On the book cover, it has a quote by him saying, like, this is an essential read. And uh, one of the main reasons why climate change is pushed around is because they're using not full information and they're presenting it as full information. Mm-hmm. So it's like... Right. So you, you were, when I was, we were talking about the earlier this week and you are saying that's, that's what's happening with COVID. Cause remember the destiny guy and he was saying that they'll read the white paper and then they'll use the, the lines of the white paper, but white papers aren't actually like peer reviewed. Yeah. They're just like someone's hypothesis. To get an, a, to, just to get attention to the to study, but the study doesn't mean it's peer reviewed. Like, or it's, we, a, we don't know if the study's true, true or, or not. Yeah. Or how accurate it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that, that's what they're doing with the uh, whole climate change thing. It's like they'll take um, uh, they'll take like a thing where it's like, oh, man-made. It, it might not be man-made or like, oh, global warming is better than global colding or like, mm-hmm. uh, can you really trust the science, you know? And, and that level of disinformation or like that level of doubt that mm-hmm. you put into something yeah. is enough to feed inaction, mm-hmm. you know? And I think like climate change is a perfect parallel to what's going on with COVID right now, because yeah, there's like so much inaction, especially in the U S right. We're at what? 50% of vaccination and double dose here. Yeah. Yeah. Canada, right? Yeah. 50%. Yeah. That's amazing. Are is, but USA 75% double dose. No, no, no. They, I think they've only hit 55%. Of double fully dose. vaccinated people really eh? and they've had it for so much longer something like that 55 or 60 yeah. and i still see so many like videos of people who are just talking about 
like it's it's like mind control. <laughs> You're gonna, it's gonna have metals. Um, you're gonna be magnet- magnetic. And- yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that video you showed me, and then it wasn't <laughs> yeah. working, and then we're like, this, this woman just seems crazy now. <laughs> but yeah, wherever you got injected, you're you're magnetic all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but but so with the white paper thing, you know, that's why a lot of people like because we're we're watching the science in real time and nobody really knows how science works mm. in terms of like white papers you think that one scientist says something it must be the truth right you know but but if you take that out of context then you, you know we're just there's people manipulating. like goodness like people don't understand the whole concept they might say it's from a white paper thing right yeah. let's say they use that term but nobody understands what that means yeah, white paper, white paper, you mean like scientists wrote it, right? Right. Oh, scientists know what they're doing, right? <laughs> yeah. But no, it's not peer-reviewed yet. It's just being submitted for peer review. Yeah, right. And all right, these totally. things. So it's like, no, but this is not what people are thinking. Wait, it, and you can it's write not as, part of our normal psyche. Normal. You, you could write a white paper about anything. You mm-hmm. could say, like, there's no such thing as gravity, and then you write that white paper. But you have to wait for it to be peer-reviewed. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could write the paper, but there's no validity until people look into it. Yeah. And, but that's that's what the media does, right? Like they take little pieces of something and like adjust it. Yeah. Uh, to their means. Yeah. Um, like I think even probably media falls into that thing too. Maybe they don't understand. Depends on the type of media we're talking about. But yeah. And I think yeah, oh, I think what's happened here is generally all this misinformation and stuff. All that this has all happened because of alternate media. But oh, I mean okay, that okay. that is that has like really what what I mean by that is like like social media? Yeah. Especially yeah. like people just reading things on Facebook and making connections that yes. isn't real connections. Yeah, 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 totally. And they're not real stories, but people go to Facebook for news, which is mm, not Fox. like a good source because anybody can post anything. True. That's actually super true. And that's what's causing all this issues in the world actually do a whole lot that's actually super true because like you can be like um uh apple cider vinegar was a huge thing right so mm-hmm. they're like oh apple cider vinegar cures cancer mm-hmm. right you don't need to have it peer-reviewed for you to say it mm-hmm. what's more you can also add money to that thing so it becomes an ad so it mm-hmm. gets seen by more people right so frequency makes you believe that something's true the more you repeat something Mm -hmm. the more they see something the more they think it's valid yeah so yeah you're right and then the algorithm doesn't help because then (laughs) you think that one's true then it's going to send you more that exactly yeah yeah that's true eh? we alternate media and and the fact that we consume media on social media platforms yeah i mean like i was seeing that too like that's why i always send you guys in that group chat like (laughs) um like headlines from like Nar City and stuff, and then it'd be like, "Is this true?" Right. And then you actually you only you look into the actual <laughs> article. I'm like, okay, I'm, I don't have time for this like, to look at the article. I just need to know like the information. Right, because my always like my instinct was always been like, I don't believe what I what I'm seeing here. Right, right. right. Totally, I need yeah. to know. Like that's just. I guess I, I will fall for some things. I guess, but like generally, I try to keep that. Yeah, yeah. Is like you want to see where the source is. Yeah, it's like okay, where like you're t- the the headline. I mean, ninety percent of people just read the headline. Yeah, and that the headline do. doesn't tell you anything. Yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. If you, it might be like the information is in the article, but you had to read it to get that right. Yeah, so totally, it's like, totally. I was just like, 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 like we're talking about the white paper. It was like new study shows this, but in the article is saying that. It's a white paper that's being sent to, for peer review showing right. this. Yes, so yes, like, yes, you got to yes, read yes. that article to get that information. Yeah, yeah, totally. But no one's going to read the article. You, you remember the guy that I had to block on uh, Instagram who was that, like a BJJ dude? And mm-hmm. he like, he would send, he was like, I post something about vaccines and he was like super anti-vax and he's like, he started naming all of these like court cases. Remember? And then you... Like I sent it to you, I'm like, what's this guy talking about? And you actually looked up the court case, and you're like, okay, this this has to do with like infants. You remember? It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. it didn't even have to do with like because it was an anti-vax court case, uh-huh. and it's like you're you you can come to a court case with any evidence you want. Yeah, that's, but yeah. It's up to the judge to figure out if it's true or not. Exactly. So it's like, sure, you came to the court case with all this evidence, but if it's junk evidence, exactly. 
it doesn't mean it's real. That's right. Yeah. Just to, just to have, just say you're going to sue someone or whatever, doesn't mean that you have, you're going to win this case, right? But right. But, but then it's he like, was like, he was like citing the court case and he's yeah. like, well, yeah, but did you see what they bring? Well, one, he probably didn't even read that court case. <laughs> like the fact that you read the court case, like, dude, that is too much work, you know? And then like, well, I didn't read everything, but yeah, but I'm still, getting like, even the fact that you, you, you looked at it. You're right, you know? right, right. And then. But there's like simple things to know. It's like, yeah, it's just a court case. You can take anything to the court. It yeah. doesn't mean there's like, no ruling on this yet. Totally, there's no ruling. So it's like to, to bring it to a more like tangible example. If you have an accident, okay, you have a car crash accident. Mm -hmm. You're like, no, he did it. And the other one's like, no, he did it. Yeah. Okay, so it's true. It's up to the judge to figure out if it's true. Yeah. We can both say something's true mm -hmm. and we can bring it up in the court of law. But it doesn't mean it's true. Yeah. Just like all these people being like, oh, this like vaccinations hurt my child, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, but was it, it was, was the causation really the vaccination exactly. or was the causation like a myriad of other things? Right. You know, it's like we were doing that with COVID. Remember all those like COVID related deaths? And mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, but if they had like high diabetes or high cancer mm -hmm. and they died because of COVID, it's like, well, I mean, we did, we did come upon like, if COVID wasn't introduced, then they might have still survived. Yeah. You know, but it doesn't mean that the fatality of COVID is that high because those people are already sick. You know, mm -hmm. they already had an underlying condition. No, but like, yeah, it, yeah I think we were saying that say they had but diabetes. Without, without COVID. Yeah. Without COVID, they would have been fine. Right. Because right. They, they, would still, they might have had like 10 years to live, for instance. Yeah, yeah. But when COVID they got COVID, they sped it up. They died. Yeah. Within months. So that's still a COVID death. It is still a COVID death. But then if you attribute the fatality rate of COVID, mm -hmm. it depends on who's getting COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So there's like layers to it. It's sure, like, yeah. There's ways to break it down. Yeah. But like that's still considered a COVID but, death, right? right? Totally. totally but but now, now, now it's like framing. So mm -hmm. how do you want to break it down? Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, is COVID really that bad? Maybe. But it depends on how you want to present the information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like... I feel like there's so much... There's there's so much wonkiness in the media and in information in general. It's like, you really have to learn how to trust the experts. You have to have... You have to learn how to have faith in them. <laughs> yeah. You know? It's <laughs> yeah. like, dude, you spent all this time studying science. You tell me the vaccine's good. I believe you. Mm -hmm. You know? But they're backed by Big Pharma. Okay, so is Coca-Cola. Like, hello. <laughs> you know? You know what I mean? Like... Yeah, but... No. <laughs> everything's yeah. backed by something. So it's like, we just have to... You have to trust them to do their job right. Yeah. And if they mess up, they mess up. Like those uh, those people who got like saline instead of um, mm -hmm. the COVID vaccine, right. they had to come back and get the shot. Yeah. It's like, it is what it is. Like people mess up on their jobs, but, you know, we're still trusting them to know how to do it. Like, what do you do? Right. I mean, there's still going to be human error here and human there. Human error, totally. Yeah, yeah. That's but, like not out of the bag here, but we're but you there's ways to it. prevent it as much as possible, right? So. Totally, totally, but yeah. also it's like, but this is your job. Like mm -hmm. I, tr I have to trust you to do your job. It's like, yep. that would be like me hiring an architect to mm -hmm. build a house. And then me being like, are you sure the math is right? <laughs> no, you have to trust them yeah. that the house will be built correctly. Right. You know, but we don't do that with like COVID vaccines <laughs> and stuff. You know what I mean? It's like you trust a plumber, you trust a architect, you trust the policeman, you know, but like you don't trust, the scientists. Yeah, which makes me like, why? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's weird. Yeah. Um, but, but the whole thing with, uh, the, the whole thing with the climate change, w one thing I found really interesting in the book is they kept saying that uh, it's hard to change a person's mind if their job, it, it's hard to educate a person on climate change if their job relies solely on climate change. Mm -hmm. So like if you're working at like a um, oil company and you're making sure. like a million dollars in bonuses every year, you'll want to look the other way or yeah. you won't want to read the science. Yeah. You know, for a long time they weren't looking at the science. Yeah. It's totally right. Yeah. Or like if you work for like a cigarette company, yeah. people don't want to know that what they're doing is a bad thing. Mm -hmm. They just want, that's all about the money. At the end. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's too mean. 
a means to an end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think the only way, like, I think. Well, that's, uh, I, yeah, I mean, those are the bodies. Why would why would they? They're I'm making money job, from oil. Why would that, no, that's not their job. Won't be there to stop oil, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you know what's funny? It's like it's like you get hired as an oil engineer, right? Yeah. So you're like, I'm just doing my job. It's yeah. up to the lobbyists to figure out that portion. Exactly. You know? And I, I think I, I can read all the books. I can make all the purchases, whatever, whatever. But I think at the end of the day, it really does come down to the billionaires to fix everything. Like Elon Musk being like, we need electric cars. I'm going to make an affordable car mm-hmm. that's electric. Like he changed the game. Now yeah. there's all these electric cars. Right. I mean, he showed that it's possible, right? Yeah, and then totally. now we've got laws saying that by 2035 for Canada, at least yeah. any new car sales will be electric. Yeah. So it has to be structural change. You know, yeah. you can't blame the people for it. It's sort of like, it, it's sort of like this, like, um, if I get, oh, this is a weird example, but hopefully this makes sense. It's like, if I gave you a knife and a gun, I'm like, how do you want to die? Mm-hmm. Right. It's like, you're only limiting me to these two options. <laughs> you know, they it takes someone to be like, um, to introduce the option of, I won't kill you. Right. You know, but we we're like, like we're, we're kind of trapped in every decision we make. Cause it's like, okay, sure. You're going to buy green products. Okay. But that green product is linked to gas because Mm -hmm. how do you transport the green product? Mm -hmm. You need a truck. So it's like even in your attempt to be holier than thou, you're still a part of the problem. Yeah. You know? So that's what I mean about like the knife and the gun. It's like both both ways are going to harm you. You know? Right. Yeah. And I think we're like, we don't realize how trapped in the system we are that's why you have like a lot of loud people who are like screaming about like buy this recycle this it's like (laughs) that yeah but really that only goes so far right and remember when i was like the one thing i don't like i I get the idea you don't want plastic straws yeah totally but what i hate is paper straws oh they're like they're they they just don't work yeah (laughs) Yeah, have you you tried a metal straw no no it's like a new thing now where you purchase your own straw right yeah yeah, yeah. it's like made of metal i bought one for my sister <laughs> and then um the first thing she said was where's the case and i was like oh yeah it didn't come with a case so it's like a case like a case for the straw so she's like so i'm supposed to carry around this metal thing <laughs> and i just put it in my drinks it's gonna be dirty and i'm like, like oh, right it's true it's yeah. like a flaw and you gotta clean this thing it's a flawed solution <laughs> So it's like, give me a better solution or I'm going to pick the freaking plastic straw, bro. <laughs> exactly. You know? Like right now, the plastic straw is the one that fits. Yeah. It's like the best solution. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's covered. It doesn't deteriorate mm-hmm. if you leave. It's like the problem with the paper straw is you put it in a drink and then you leave it for an hour and then all of a sudden the freaking... Paper's all melted away. And you're like, oh, dude, you ruined my drink. <laughs> yeah. You know? That's why I think, again, you know, I go back to Elon Musk. It's like, he was genius. He's like, I'm going to create the best car that you're going to want to buy and it's electric mm-hmm. and that'll change the game. Mm. Like we, we have to realize that we're sheep that need to be led in a certain way. It yeah. has to be anything that you're creating new and has to be better than or same as, or better than whatever we are using currently. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the only way this will work. <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because like um, the Final Fantasy VII video game, it's all about climate change. I was saying that before, <laughs> and but they they position it as like um, uh, Mako. They didn't call it oil; they called it Mako. Mm-hmm. And like the whole game is all about like being an activist for climate change, and but it's funny because they're like a bunch of ragtag. <laughs> people it's like why don't you guys just enter politics and freaking like why, why are you trying to blow up these mako reactors right, in the video right. game there's a better way you know create like work within the system to change the system mm-hmm. like be an elon musk you know like the, i went to the uh like i worked for that company before right and they yeah. one of the things was all about climate change and then when i looked into the numbers all I did was look into the numbers because they were like, oh, just because like one of the things we were, we were spewing was like, everyone should use a bike. I'm like, all right, cool. Let's say we eliminated, um, ze- we had zero carbon emissions in Canada. Mm-hmm. 
what would that do for climate change? Because they're making everyone feel bad, you know, like, oh, you should bike to work. You should take public <laughs> transit, blah, blah, blah. You should have a green garden. Like, there's so many things. And I was like, okay, let me just look at the numbers. How much is Canada? Very simple. How much is Canada contributing to climate change? It was 2%. Like, yeah, 80% we, we, was China. We, so I was <laughs> like, okay, so you're making me feel bad about my day-to-day decisions, but I'm contributing 2% to the whole? <laughs> it's like, that, that doesn't sound right. You know? Yeah. So it's like, even if the whole of Canada is fully green, you're not really making a dent in climate change. No. So it's out of your hands. Mm-hmm. You know? But, yeah. But that was a big company that was like, it was a big like non-profit activist company that I was working for. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. it's like, you guys don't even know. <laughs> you know? What should be really happening is helping those countries yes. to reduce their let's emissions. Let's push those policies. Like, yeah. let's be policy makers. You know? Yeah. Something like that. Just like the Final Fantasy video game, right? Yeah. It's like they're blowing up the Mako reactors. It's like, it's really not going to do anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the I think it was... Uh, it was... Uh, I forgot his name. The guy that does Inconvenient Truth. Oh, yeah, yeah. Al Gore. Yeah, Al Gore. Um, he was mentioned in the book. He was? Yeah, he's mentioned yeah. in the book. Uh, no, because I was watching one of the, one of the documentaries, because they have two out, I think. Yeah. But it was like... Uh, like in those, I think UN meetings or something, mm-hmm. they're trying to make a climate deal or whatever, and then they're like, India was like, "Well, you guys had hundred years with oil, which yeah. is cheap." Yeah, totally. Um, what is our chance, right? Yes. So it's like, if you want us to do it, then you got to help us. Yeah, uh, he's, totally. this is not cheap. It's, like green energy is not cheap. It's so. <laughs> it's yeah, I I hundred percent agree with that. It's like a global relationship you have to think about too. Yeah. It's like okay so now we're all pissed at china and india for constantly Mm. contributing to Mm -hmm. climate change it's like yeah but they're just trying to level up in the video game too yeah like western society is so like it's a privilege for us to be like yo we should look at climate change (laughs) you know because you know like maslow's hierarchy of needs like you need your foundation and then you can move up the ladder move Mm -hmm. up the ladder and then the final one is (laughs) self-actualization but the if you don't, if you're listening to this, you don't know what it is. Google Maslow's hierarchy of needs. That's like the foundation for everyone's driving force. Like you can't actually hit a state of um, self betterment until you have food, water, shelter. Yeah. Right. So it's a privilege for Western nations to be like, we need to focus on climate change because mm-hmm. those like freaking developing nations, they don't even have their wood, water, food, and shelter. Yeah. You know, they're like, let us get that first. And then once we hit the self actualization stage, like you guys, then <laughs> we can talk about shifting. Right. Unless you help us. Unless now. you, no, but yeah. But that's then, the whole point of that yeah. was, well, right. then you give us some money or give us some, whatever. But they're like, hey, we can't give you that money. Like, okay. So we can't. Well, I think they it. did some deal. Oh, okay, okay. There was some portion of deal with that. From like, what I remember, I, I just don't understand protesting. Like, like in terms of that, like protesting makes no sense to me. It's like, like, like uh, when I was working for that other company, and they were talking about, I work for a lot of nonprofits. <laughs> I believe I believe in it until <laughs> you're in it, and you're like, oh, you guys don't know what you're doing, uh, or you are a part of the system. You just don't realize you're part of the system. Anyways, so they were there was this huge like, um, Calgary thing on native land they're doing the oil okay yeah. right so there was like these huge protests in toronto about it and like some mm. of my co-workers were standing there protesting and i'm like probably should have joined politics <laughs> so like really pro- like what what is you standing on the road gonna do you're just gonna piss off everyone else on like young street young mm-hmm. neglington mm-hmm. they're gonna be all upset because we just can't get to the, the location and then on the flip side, there are some natives who are like... Well, generally, the protest is to get the word out there to everybody else. Yeah, but... That hasn't totally, heard this information. Totally, totally, I think totally. that's what the generally the idea of a protest is. Totally, totally, totally. Um, all right, we'll, we'll put a pin on that, and we'll circle right back on that. Mm-hmm. So uh, you were saying before that there are some natives that actually want the oil because yeah. it gives them a job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, okay, so what are you going to do about that? those people? Mm-hmm. You know? So in your protest to stop this oil stuff, it's like you're, we're, we're in like um, a winner and loser game, you know, like 
there, there'll never yeah, be. That's why it's not a black and white situation. It's not a black and white. It's just never like, a black and white situation. All right, we shut down all the oil. Oh, we shut down all the oil. Great. Now I don't have any more money to pay for my kid's school. <laughs> right, but it's also like all of Alberta loses its money. Easy, totally. Like, what do they do? Like, you totally. can't. It's not that easy to just stop. <laughs> totally, 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 totally. Yeah. Do we need to think more outside of the box? Yeah. Um, okay. So to circle back on what you just said about uh, to get the word out there. So that's true. Then how come Christian preachers aren't really converting as many people on the street? Mm-hmm. You, you just, you hear them, you're like, you're annoying. Yeah, yeah. So what's the difference between you as a protester and a Christian preacher on the street? They should actually Well, there's, there's fr- two different kinds of preachers now. Okay. If yeah. you noticed it. No, I don't. I don't there's, know. there's, um, sure. There's the ones that go door to door. Jehovah's Witnesses or oh, yeah, yeah, totally. right. Those are annoying. People that's just the general notion that people get is that's nobody likes that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. And then I see in um at the street corners, they just stand there. And they have the pamphlet out. Oh, more they like don't say gentle. anything. Okay, okay. Yeah, they don't say anything. If you want to come and read it, you can. That's oh. up to you. They don't say anything. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. No, I've no, seen but, those people. But there, there are two types of protesters. There's the ones shouting with the signs <laughs> and there's the ones that are peaceful protesting just sitting in the park. Right. right. So same so thing. Again, it's like there's two ways. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but what I think is funny is what I think is hypocritical is if you, if you're some, if you're listening to this and you're somebody who actively goes to protests, but scoffs at people trying to convert people on the street, mm-hmm. that's hypocritical. Because you're both doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. You just don't realize it. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh, look at this annoying pro-Christian person trying to like, <laughs> it's like, and then they're looking Push at his you, ideas on me. his ideas on <laughs> you. And then they're like, look at this annoying pro, uh, pro-anti-climate pro change person trying to push their ideas on me. Both of you guys are doing the same thing. But right. you're hating on one another. Mm. You know? Now, if you're the type of person that loves that stuff and they're like, oh, I, I can see what you're doing. I love that you're getting a message out there. Good on you. But I'm pretty sure 90% of those people like are clashing with one another. Yeah. yeah, like yeah. Both, both sides of the coin find the other one annoying. Yeah. We're in a privileged state that we can just protest. Can do that. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, totally. Even, even like with the COVID thing, right? We're privileged enough to be like, I'm not going to take the COVID vaccine. <laughs> yeah. You know, developing nations are like, dude, please, please give it to us. You know? We want to get back to normal. And we're like, yeah, I'll let that Moderna expire. That being said, I'm actually actively refusing Moderna. I'm like, no, no, I want, I want Pfizer. Like, I'm waiting. <laughs> so I was like, I'm not, I'm, I'm acknowledging my privilege. That's cool too. Right. Yeah. I got lucky though. Yeah, you did get lucky. You got that Pfizer, Pfizer gang. But yeah, so anyways, I, I, I almost feel like if you can't see the hypocrisy, why are you living? No, no, no. But like, <laughs> no, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, I know, I know. But sometimes, so we, on, bro. sometimes we are too much in our own heads that we don't get to like put ourselves in other people's shoes. Yeah, true. And that's how we don't understand each other and thus problems occur. And I think that's what like being asleep at the wheel is. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. that's, that's what, that's what not being awake is. Yeah. You're not realizing what, you're all, you're even you're doing mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. weird world okay so uh final thing let's talk about loki what'd you think i thought it was great yeah it was, it was man they're making some crazy movies now i mean they're not movies <laughs> but like yeah yeah it's yeah you get more out of shows than tv than movies now you yeah know? of course yeah. in an hour like we're we're gonna watch a uh, black widow today and it's like Sure, it'll be like, let's say two hours. Mm-hmm. But if that was like a mini series, dude, we would have got so much from that. Like, it would have been way better, you know? Right, yeah, there's more. I think that's the thing with TV and movies. In TV, like, we kind of saw that too. It's like we can focus more on specific um, characters and yeah, their yeah, growth. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever they're learning. We can and, attach to them more. Yeah, and get more attached to these characters. You don't, you get that little bit in the movie, but you're not really just for that two hours or one hour, whatever, however long long yeah, that movie yeah, is and yeah. that's it we we keep coming back to loki every week there's yeah, another yeah. episode so we keep sticking to the same but but also at the same time though i'd be more like i watched once upon a time in hollywood or like i watched uh, quentin mm-hmm. tarantino's movies mm-hmm. over and over because it's like i know it'll start and end but like if i was going to rewatch a series that's like weeks of my time right you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah you yeah. can't actually do that with a 
with that's the TV thing show. yeah i guess there's you can go back to a movie again because it's not as long yeah shows to go back to the pretty long yeah the pros and cons too <laughs> yeah totally like, like it, it's it's a great one time but it's not a good replay like, right. I don't, I don't well i generally series. don't like to rewatch on this some like it's really good or like something recent i watched it and i'll watch it again oh okay yeah, yeah. but like not like i don't know if i can do quentin tarantino's like i like mm-hmm. i can watch maybe some scenes just to watch all of it again knowing the whole story it's too long so how do you point. feel about shows then like you feel like do you feel more likely to watch shows again repeating as to repeat to, something as opposed to movies um to repeat shows depends on how long it's been since i've watched the show but are you more likely to rewatch a movie or a show Probably a movie. Yeah, right. Because yeah, it's just because it's a shorter time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If if it had to be that I'm rewatching it, yeah. Yeah. But like, that's generally if it's I wouldn't rewatch it myself. If it's just me rewatching, I yeah, think it's we, like we watch like Game of Thrones like three times. Right, but times. I'm watching it with other people yeah, yeah, yeah. and getting their like that's the new reactions. thing would be their reactions yeah, totally in there. Totally. So that's what you're kind of I'm kind of like um, running off of in that sense. Yeah, totally. totally. I, I remember you watched Game of Thrones all by yourself, and then you watched Game of Thrones again with friends. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, watched, it's yeah, exactly. Yeah. Then you watched Game of Thrones with me, and then Tara was like, "What's Game of Thrones?" So we watched it all again <laughs> together. So it was like, I swear, you watched that like whole series like four times. Uh, yeah, know? exactly. And but the, the thing with series, that one bro. is the, the thing with. So there's sometimes I guess it's you didn't like there when I'm rewatching them, there were things I missed or like oh, how yeah, you can totally, and yeah, then yeah. how you can connect it. So there's like some new aspect to it too, for sure, for sure, where yeah. you're connecting things that happened three seasons later, because but they was know, talking about they it because then yeah, yeah exactly yeah true true true. There's some of that too. I mean that's just like movies too, like those especially those movies where they have a crazy plot mm-hmm, twist mm-hmm. and then like you watch it again. Like Tenet, They've been t- yeah. I watch it so many times, right? Because <laughs> it, everything is perfectly put together. It's like that was an amazing movie. Yeah, some of those like especially Tenet, that I think needs a couple of views just to get everything because there's a lot of things going on. In so that yeah, and he <laughs> masterfully put everything together, like like right. yeah, well, I won't go into it here, but I. I think that his level of genius is second to none. He chess pieced that whole movie. <laughs> but yeah, so like, yeah, that's something you, like Game of Thrones is kind of like that too, but that's a heavy investment. Yeah. To, like it was, yeah. it was chess pieced as well. Mm-hmm. Except for the final season. I don't think that was really. Yeah, that's kind of like as if it never happened. Yeah, yeah totally. <laughs> but, but yeah, I the investment is is a lot less for movies than than shows yeah yeah uh what do you think of loki and loki falling in love that's kind of weird right or no i thought it was weird it's like yeah, isn't it like, the loki you're like it's yourself like almost but... incest but not incest yeah, it's like, it's, i was kind of confused I was, like, <laughs> I was like how do how do i how i don't do know I how to feel about, about this, this. I don't, yeah i don't know how i feel about this right now because it's like on one hand he changed his whole personality <laughs> yeah. because of her but then, on the other hand, it's like, but that's you. Maybe only Loki can do that to himself. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's yeah, only yeah. Loki to Loki. Remember Owen Wilson said that? He's like, how narcissistic for you to fall in love with yourself. And that's kind that's of... such a Loki thing. To yeah, do, yeah, yeah. You know? And it seems like that's that's the only thing that does work. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did like the fact that Owen Wilson didn't die in this, though. Yeah, they didn't really die. Yeah, they didn't really die. That's that's good. Yeah. I, I like him. You think he'll be in movies or no? That'd be kind of cool. Oh, maybe. We'll see. We'll find out what happens next week. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who is running the TVA? Yeah. So, so you were saying uh, Witcher? Oh no, not Witcher. Watcher. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, the What If trailer was revealed. Yeah, yeah, we watched that, that. Yeah, that showed off um, the Watchers. But I, I thought that's I who know. the TVA was because, like, mm-hmm. with the. I think if you go back and listen to the old podcast, we talked about this already, but I thought it was them because there was like three Watchers or whatever. Right. Like yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Because they were talking about like the three people who created time, and mm-hmm. then if you look at the comics, like they were always there watching things. Mm-hmm. Maybe, th- maybe this is setting up for the whole new um, arc. Yeah, you know, uh, like uh, yeah, like how Thanos was the big climax, and then maybe Watcher will be the big climax. They must be setting. Or it must up be for Galactus. Something. I feel like Galactus is going to be the next one. You can't do Galactus. In a small form, because he was a big player. Yeah. 
You know? Well, they're going to make Fantastic Four and stuff, right? Yeah. And they're going to redo all that, so I'm pretty sure it's going to be Silver good. Surfer. There, there's so much that they can draw upon here, yeah. you know? They haven't even introduced X-Men yet. Nope. I think we said this before, too, but, like, X-Men, Fantastic Four, Silver Surfer, they all have to do with Galactus. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if Galactus is the next supervillain. Mm-hmm. But he's just a straight up world leader. They did they did uh bring Galactus in Fantastic Four two. Yeah. Yeah, those Fantastic Four in the Fox movies. Yeah. Fox versions of Fantastic they, Four. They had Galactus there. Yeah. And Silver Surfer. Yeah, yeah. So they might go down that route. I can see it. <laughs> yeah. Might. Or right now it's all about the uh But they're like really like searching through all the Marvel ethos and pulling out stuff that yeah, generally totally. isn't that popular, I think. Yeah, totally, totally. So, which will be interesting to see. I, I like the what if because uh, they brought back uh, Michael B. Jordan's character and mm-hmm. uh, Chadwick Boseman's character. Yeah. That was cool to see them there. I really liked the um, uh, Killmonger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's good to see him back because <laughs> it's like, yeah. Right. He, he was a great character. It'd be so yeah, sad yeah, yeah. to see him um, just like cease to be in the movies. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. What What do you think about Black Panther? I, I saw this thing like Black Panther had five scripts. I think they were trying to do like some yeah, disinformation kind of thing just in case one of those scripts leaked. It's like not the real script. Right. Do you, do you think do you, I'm banking on they're going to bring back Killmonger and he'll become the new Black Panther. Who else is going to take that spot? I know. I know. That's why they have a tough situation. Like a random like, series is going to become the freaking... They have a tough situation. I don't know. I know, right? They have to figure out how to make the story right. So, yeah. <laughs> it, it would probably be best to make him the new Black Panther. It would make sense, but... But are they going to I do don't it? know. Yeah. Because there is a Black Panther movie coming out. There are, Did they already film it? Or? No, no, no. Do they, do they do any post pre production? Because that'll give no I have no, I, I have no idea. Will tell you who the characters yeah, yeah, yeah. are. I don't think they've done anything yet. Yeah, aside from the five scripts that I saw, like they. Yeah, I mean, I mean maybe they, they have, have five scripts. scripts that they don't know which way to take it. Which way to take it yet? Yeah. Do, all right. So, all right. Let's just let's just put a toss up. Do you think it'll be a new guy, or do you think Killmonger will come back? I'm going Killmonger. Yeah, that's what I feel like it should be. But didn't he? He died though, right? But so many people. You can died. always bring them back. You yeah, can I always know. bring them back. Just like uh, the guy. Remember, he got shot in his back, and they're like, "Oh, he will die if he stays here." <laughs> the the uh, colonizer guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they brought him back to Wakanda, mm-hmm. and then they healed his back. He's like, "How long have I been out?" He's like, two days or something." <laughs> right. And like, oh, it takes months to heal. He's like, "Yeah, where you're from, but not here." Mm-hmm. So like maybe maybe yeah, it's likely. It would make sense for him to come back. Killmonger. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. Because yeah. I, I, plus, plus Michael B. Jordan was really close with Chadwick Boseman, so unless they go with a female Black Panther, but I don't uh, know. there's probably a toss up in there. There's probably yeah, right. So it could be that one too. of those scripts. Could be one of those. It could be like. <laughs> It could be a uh, Black Panther's uh, girl. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, okay. uh, I don't remember her name, but she Shiri. I don't know her. I don't know her name. <laughs> yeah, she was in Twelve Years a Slave. Yeah, yeah I know Lupita Luongo. Wow, you know her name, damn. All right. Yeah. You don't know her character name, but you know her actual name. <laughs> so funny. All right. So, what what do you think of uh, Witcher Two? The trailer. I thought it looked good. Uh, it just reminded me of the game. I know. And I wanted to play it right after. I was like, oh, I want to get this game. Uh, well, you have the game, but I want to play it. But they have a, um, uh, they have an anime one, too, that's coming out, I think, in August. Wow. Witcher. Oh, no way. Yeah, they an revealed anime. that. Because I think the Witcher. Doing the Jedi Witcher Con is going on. And oh, that's cool. On day two, I think they revealed the um, the anime one. Sick. Does it look good? I think so. I can't remember now. <laughs> I, I'd much rather like, it's like cyberpunk, you know, like it's just too much. I don't know, to, to fully invest in a video game now. It just seems like too much time for me because you have to memorize the controls. And then if you switch the video game, you kind of forget the controls mm-hmm. and you have to jump mm-hmm. back in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I'd rather just watch the series now. <laughs> yeah. It's just easier. Yeah. Yeah. And like, like I, I took me a long time to finish the Witcher game. Exactly. So I will so not like, be going back to that. Yeah, totally, totally. <laughs> so it's like, it's not even a game you could run through either, because like the characters are hard, right? Yeah, uh, you gotta be really, battles. you gotta be really like a uh, dedicated to if you really want to finish it within a week or something. Yeah, right? exactly. you gotta be really, really dedicated. Like playing, you're playing ten hours a day or something. Yeah, like that. yeah. I just, it took me what three years. Yeah, <laughs> to totally. Get, yeah, <laughs> to actually finish it. But I, I do <laughs> like that in the show they're bringing Siri to the Witcher place. That started. A, yeah. What was what is it called again? Voromir. Yeah, I think something like that. Yeah. What Voromir. The, I forgot the, the guy. The guy's Vesemir name. Vesemir was Vesemir's, the guy. Right? Oh, maybe I just mixed it up. But yeah. Anyways, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm excited for that. It looks really, really good. Yeah. The first season was real. The first like mm-hmm. series was really, really good too. See, that's another guy that's old, but he looks so jacked and <laughs> doesn't look like the old school actors of before. No, he also plays video games, so. That's true, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot to look forward to in uh, 2021. Oh, movie theaters are opening back up, so we're going to watch, uh, I guess we'll watch Fast and the Furious next week. We can review it. Sure, yeah. And we'll, we could also review uh, Black Widow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're watching that today. Tonight, yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Till next time, Vish. Tiger is yo. Peace. Peace. All right, hope you enjoyed that episode. Uh, be sure to like, share, subscribe, all those fun things, and check out our sponsors Zenro Clothing Co., Portion Bakery, and Podbean. Take it easy, fish. Peace.